Hi all, I have another interesting Leela chess game, ID514, playing black against Stockfish 8. Now, the time control is 48 seconds with, uh, for almost with a 0.2 second increment per move. Uh, I'll give you in the pinned comment the spreadsheet owner who's been creating these particular games. So you can see the spreadsheet and all the data as well. So check out that comments. Hardware, uh, Stockfish 8 was on a 3.8 gigahertz uh, machine and Leela is on a GTX 1060. Knight C3, let's get into the game. I've played this uh, quirky move sometimes. Also against the Scandinavian, you can sometimes E4, D5, Knight C3 it's tran by transposition. I've played this. This has been played by Alexander Alkine. Quite provocative, kind of like um, one of the ideas of <laughs> the Alkine's defense, in fact, in reverse, to provoke black and try and sometimes get access to light squares by getting black to put pawns on dark squares. Leela actually obliges here with e5, d3, but now plays c5. So it's a nice space advantage. And in a way, it's it does seem difficult. Well, the challenge will be how can white exploit the light squares? Uh, and can white get some sort of attack on the king side maybe later? So f4, but an interesting decision here already. Leela just simply takes on f4. It doesn't matter about, she doesn't mind about uh, a piece coming out, uh, developing. The bishop takes, but it is a potential target on f4. So knight c6, knight f3, knight g e7, a very clever move, designed to get a tempo on the bishop, but also strike at dark squares. Trying to take over the dark squares does seem a very good strategic plan here. g3, knight g6. We have bishop g2 offering the bishop. That's rejected actually with h5. We have bishop g5, f6, the bishop drops back. And now h4. So gaining even more space. Knight f4. Uh, on taking, you might ask, the forcing or an obvious looking move, bishop d6. It kind of shatters white a bit on, on the dark square control. I think white is worse here. Black's doing very well here. Uh, Okay, so has got good compensation. So that's ignored. Knight f4, keeping the pawn structure intact. Knight takes, g takes, h3 now, gaining some more space there. A, a form pawn, t h o r n, a form pawn. Queen c7, f5, bishop d7. You can see that the dark squares are quite nicely controlled by the other chess here. Queen e2, and now costing queen side. This does seem logical to avoid any king safety issues and that is where black has the space of voyage and better king security it seems intuitively bishop d6 king b1 and now nifty move bishop e8 the bishop can go to either h5 for example or f7 we have queen f2 a5 rook c1 so an interest is taken in c3 and so so with that move as well putting pressure on d4 Lena doesn't mind c3 she plays a4 c3 is played D takes, rook takes, and now queen e7, which kind of ties white down because of that e4 pawn being weak. So here, uh, rook c4 is actually played. Uh, so d4 would be a disaster, either taking on e4 or even taking here, and then bang, bishop b4, hitting the queen. It's a disaster. So this is totally out of the question. So it seems, you know, black has the edge here. It's like sitting on white's position. A3, this is very interesting positional pawn sacrifice. Now, it's actually not taken. Uh, it looks that would wreck white's pawn structure anyway. It's actually ignored, but basically now putting pressure on C5, that's parried, keeping that positional pawn sack offering. Rook C3. And A takes B2, which does slice white's pawn structure anyway, leaving it an isolated A pawn. Queen takes b2, and this is very, very interesting now. King c7 with plans to target that poor little a pawn. You will note that with bishop f7 and the rooks potentially doubling on the a file, this is a really uh, positional, beautiful idea if that a pawn can be um, pressurized. So rook a8, a3. Actually, here though, with rook g1, some tactical nuances creep in here. You might think bishop f7 sits, sets a nifty trap, but actually Leela 
plays bishop d7. On bishop f7, there is a, what seems to be a trap, but it sort of backfires. If black tries to win the exchange here, it's really wrecking the whole position because after d4, it's an even position. Uh, there's no point doing this. This is exactly kind of the thing that white wants pressure on, on the c file. So uh, bishop d7 is played, which does connect the rooks, which still means that there's going to be potential pressure on the a pawn if the rooks can double. Queen c1, rook a4, and this is just beautiful to look at. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. Rook a4. Leela just needs a backward pawn sometimes, it seems. That's a great target to attack. But here, you'll see that this battery is also designed to hit a3 potentially and undermine the center with c4 at some point. So it's really a deadly looking position. Just visually, it starts to look here, to me, visually crushing. And it's here actually that Stockfish even realizes but there's a big problem with a3 here. Queen b2. And now a nice positional tactical move here is played. b5. So that pawn is immune. If taking, then the queen just gets pinned. There's no tactical shot here for white. The queen's just getting pinned. Big advantage to black. So this horrible idea of either b4 or c4, in fact, emerges. c4 opens up that battery as well. So we've got double batteries working here. This one and the two rooks. So it's really a juicy positional game. And in fact, Lila does choose c4. b4 is also strong as well, it turns out. For example, if white plays this, black can ignore that for a moment and then take it and, and, and still get a good position here. Uh, but c4 is even stronger, technically. It is actually even stronger. It's hitting white's pawn chain. It's opening up this battery. So a3 is in real trouble. Knight d4, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes a3. Not only winning the pawn, but winning an exchange. So winning an exchange, and white still dare not take on, on c4 here, because uh, of e4 dropping. Uh, just actually, instead of knight d4, you might be wondering, hold on a sec, you might be wondering, you can look at the uh, variations PGN in the pinned comment as well, you'll see this variation. Um, sorry. Knight <laughs> d4. I had, sorry, d takes c4 here, bishop takes a3. This, this is also good because if queen takes e4 check, this is this line is, is wonderful. Because in this line, there's bishop takes f5. And here, for example, there's rook a1 check. This is a beautiful line that I wanted to show you. Queen takes c2 checkmate. So yeah, that's so knight d4 was preferred instead of d takes c4. Things really start crumbling on that. Uh, so knight takes just losing the exchange, but not losing e4 with check in this variation for white at least. E5 here. But we have now rook a2. So black doesn't mind winning the queen here for this material imbalance. F takes e5. Now queen f8 is played. This gives opportunities, well, multiple, like things like queen a8 as well are on the cards. f6, g takes, bishop d2, queen c5. It's just a really strong position for black. d takes, and now another nice positional shutdown for, against the white pieces, b4. So a pass pawn, protected pass pawn, and white's pieces don't seem that active. Queen f2. And this is a very dangerous pass pawn now, this h pawn. And there's also bishop c6 to support that. So very, very elegant play from black in this game. Very beautiful on both sides of the board. This exploitation now. And these games from this spreadsheet owner, who's a little bit anonymous, anonymous, <laughs> uh, they all get battles are battles to the death. So we see here battle to the absolute death, which makes sure that Leela can convert possession, I guess, but... At these ID versions, yeah, it usually can now uh, without being tactically swindled. So this is how the game continued. Nice technique. Dragging the pawns down. And, and actually going for a checkmate here rather than trying to queen the other one. Now this make, made a striking impression, this positional play. 
it really did. Uh, first of all, the Dark Square campaign out of the opening, then torturing that poor isolated apron by doubling the rooks, sidestepping some sort of tactical positional combination trap with not playing bishop f7 but bishop d7 just to double the rooks and then this b5 it's really crushing with options of either c4 or b4 absolutely crushing positionally and tactically then winning material uh, and then shutting down white after and then using the h pawn to win even more material after that i thought that was a really beautiful positional game i hope you do as well comments questions like shares appreciate it thanks so much